Well, welcome back if you're watching and or listening at all. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about something called the Carrington Event. And correspondingly a couple other what are called CMEs. Uh, if you don't know what either of these things, if you don't know what either of these things are, hang on, hang on, tight. You know, I will say this is a uh, far more apocalyptic than I generally share, but it, this kind of stuff is always going inside it, uh, going on inside my head. And the reason I named this one, or I'm talking about the the Carrington event. Specifically, is because this was the the uh, the first one, the the first one, the first one that I had learned about um, from one of my weird late night uh, conspiracy radio shows that I used to listen to, and and it's it's no big deal. I mean, it happened in 1859, you know. How many years ago was that now? I mean, my God, I just pulled out a calculator. That was 164 years ago. Well, not something we should be worried about, right? But let me tell you what happened. So a, a CME is what the Carrington event was. Uh, it's known as a coronal mass ejection, uh, which is uh, basically when the sun throws up. Um, I'm, you know, my astrophysicist friends, of, of which I used to have one, would probably not like my description, but I'm not speaking to astrophysicists, I'm speaking to, uh, lay people. Of course, this was the same person who'd get irritated at me when I said speed, when indeed I meant to say velocity. Um, we've all got our things, I... I cringe every time somebody says hot water heater um, or pin number. You know, we, we've all got our stuff. Um, it's not, you know, when you have a dollar, that's money. When you have several dollars, that's monies. But, you know, let's not get sidetracked more than we normally do. So, uh, coronal mass ejection, right? When the sun throws up. And the sun, in case you haven't noticed or didn't know, the sun's pretty big. So most of the time it throws up, it misses us, and that's wonderful. And by throwing up, I don't mean a solar flare. Solar flare is mostly just light. What I'm talking about is an electromagnetic effect. And I don't understand it, and I'm not claiming to. I understand what it is. I don't understand why it happens. Uh, but the electromagnetic forces get, as I've had it explained to me, wound up not unlike a spring... Uh, on the surface of the earth post recording and editing me stepping in for a moment I meant to say on the surface of the sun and then when the tension gets too tight it goes blah and, and it, it sprays out from whatever part of the sun in whatever direction the sun is facing um, and, and creates a, cor a coronal mass ejection uh, which is, um, you know, most of the time, fine, right? Because most of the time, I'm not going to do the math, but i got to imagine that if we're not in the exact right spot, we miss it. Well, in September of 1859, we were in the exact right spot. Um, the Carrington event is... is uh, sometimes called the most intense geomagnetic storm in recorded history. Uh, and essentially, uh, it, it shut down everything. Again, I apologize, post-recording and editing me. This must have been a sloppy recording. I knew what I meant. It shut down everything electronic it's an EMP except for some of the telegraphs which although were unplugged or whatever continued to still work because of the <coughs> electromagnetic energy and the telegraph wire strung across 
this nation, um, a lot of those wires ended up burning out <clears throat> because they went over voltage. And I can't help thinking about what would happen now, today, um, when everything we do is over a wire, whether your house is wireless or not, you're still doing everything over a wire. <clears throat> All your banking is done that way. I'm assuming. I know a lot of you do your shopping that way. I wish I could get into that habit, but I can't. Plus, I don't want people out here. Um, <laughs> well, I don't want strangers out here, even if they are bringing me groceries, I guess is what I should say. Um, there are some people I've invited out, and they're welcome to come out. So, the, the, the Carrington event... And y'all know what um, auroras are, right? The aurora borealis and, and, and the uh, southern aurora, whose name I can't remember right now. The auroras during the Carrington event were seen as far south. And normally they're just up in, in what we typically call the Arctic Circle, right? They were seen as far south as the Caribbean. Uh, so think Florida, if you're looking at a map of the United States, uh, it says over the Rocky mountains, the, the glow was so bright it woke up, it woke up gold miners who then began their morning. It's saying here, Cuba, Hawaii, Japan, China, and some even closer to the equator, such as Colombia. Uh, it, it hit us pretty hard. And, you know what, that was, like I said, 164 years ago, who cares, you know? Um, space and things that happen in space happen on a, a much different time scale. Um, you know, a million years is, is a drop of water in space, right? So we probably shouldn't have to worry about it again. Definitely don't need to stock up on on dried beans and rice and water or or anything like that you know they're, they're not very common at all in, in fact yeah and, and once again keep in mind I, i'm referencing wikipedia for a lot of this some of this i already knew some of this i wanted more information on since i'm not diagnosing cancer i feel okay using wikipedia and it's saying that the 18 or the 1582 storm uh, was a prolonged, severe, extreme geomagnetic, geomagnetic storm which produced an aura to 28.8 on the magnetic latitude. Uh, and to give you an idea where that is, because I had no idea and all forgotten by tomorrow afternoon, um, but 45 degrees on the globe. Okay, so the equator is zero, right? And, and the North Pole is 90. Okay? So, 45 degrees is right about where the Great Lakes are. And 30 degrees is right about where the bottom of California is. So, it came down into, well, at least Bakersfield. Right? All the way across. Um, but, you know, 1582. No one cared. You know, it was just really weird and really bright, and people went on their day, except for a couple scientists. The next one that they've got tracked here was 1730. Uh, and they don't really say anything about that. They say it was at least in, in, as intense as an event we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, but less intense than Carrington. Uh, the next one was... September of 1770, uh, where the aurora was seen as uh, low on the globe as Hawaii. Ah, it's pretty low on the globe. And then uh, 1859, like I mentioned before, the, the Carrington event. And then another one in 1872. And another one in... 
1882, and another one in 1903. They give me measurements on this one. It says that it went down to uh, about 44, so just below the Great Lakes. I I looked that up separately, and, and that's actually Oregon, about there, and then across the nation. 1909, 1921, 1938, 1940, 1941, 57, 58, 59, 67, 68, 72. By 72, we are in space, right? This caused a lot of what they're calling accidental detonations of magnetic influence sea mines. So, you know, mines that we'd laid in the, uh, in the ocean just are blowing up for no apparent reason. Uh, 1989, which is the one I said I'd get back to later, so far has been the most extreme storm of the space age. It basically blacked out all of Quebec, which is uh, in eastern Canada, and some of the U.S. up in that area. But keep in, ni- keep in mind, in, in 1989... Although by now computers were a thing, and ARPNET was, I'm sure, a thing, Um, the internet didn't exist uh, in in the way that we know it now. Um, There was not a computer in in every house, although I think I had one. I had a TI-99A, had a cassette tape drive and a... You had to hook it up to the TV uh, for a video, and you could program, and you could make your own fonts, and you could you could make your own very very basic uh, adventures. Um, I uh, wrote my first graphics based game adventure on my on my uh, TI. Um, the, the wife was gone for a few days, and and so I just sat down there and smashed my fingers against the keyboard for a couple days and, and, and wrote a very, very limited uh, graphics-based adventure. Um, well, text-based with graphics adventure. Uh, the, kind of a dungeon thing. It was fun. 1991, the Aurora River is visible as far south as Texas. July of 2000, the Bastille Day storm. And you know, every time these uh, these storms come down, they do electromagnetic damage. Because we're not talking about the electromagnetics of, of an Earth-scale object. We're talking... The, the electromagnetics of a solar uh, scale object, uh, which is uh, much greater. I know one of these, and I think it was the 72, um, and it hit Russia. Excuse me, back then it was still the Soviet Union, wasn't it? And they just about launched probably would have if they could have uh fortunately their their stuff was all down and they couldn't and then they noticed that their satellites were down and then they started taking in reports from everybody else and realized it was a a solar event and not a not not the beginning of world war three november of 2001 i actually remember this one May have been the April one, um, but I remember it because I was listening to. Uh, se- yeah, it had to be April, or maybe July of two thousand. Uh, I was drinking a lot back then, and I don't remember. Um, I and I remember because I was listening to my weird late night conspiracy uh, radio show. 
and and the announcer was talking and the announcer broadcast out of Pahrump, Nevada so think Las Vegas and was mentioning that he could see the Aurora out because he was out in the middle of the desert um, and here it is you know midnight and I've got to work tomorrow and I don't care and, and I go driving some of the old back roads in the area where I lived at the time and they were country roads with no street lights and I I, I'd like to think that I saw the Aurora, but I don't know. October of 2003, we had another one. November of 2003, we had another one. January of 2005, March of 2015, September of 2017. And the last one here on this page is February of 2022. Uh, which took out... 40 SpaceX Starlink satellites that had recently been launched uh, took them out and caused a re-entry on them. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm not saying this will ever happen again, even though I've given you, what's that got to be? Well, certainly more than 10 um, examples of, of when it's happened over the last, admittedly, 500 years. But it is a reoccurring thing, and, and this is honestly... Um, I, I've for and, and here we go conspiracy theorist me. I, I've always figured we were going to be taken out by um, an EMP of some type, and, and that's what a CME coronal mass ejection causes an electromagnetic pulse. The the same things that, that nuclear weapons do, uh, where it shuts down the grid, which means you've got as much gas as you have in your tank. You've got as much food as you have in your pantry. Um, because trust me, by the time you get to the store, they, using my finger quotes, will have already emptied it out. I mean, go try. Bring a gun. The next CME that hits us directly is going to collapse civilization. Store up on rice and beans. Right? Water. I know. This is not one of my more cheerful ones. Anyway... And until that happens, understand that each day you get is a blessing, and live it like it is. And I've got about 30 seconds left, so Sa, this is for you. I um, realized that I was wrong, that not every piece of disco produced in the 70s and 80s was horrible, but this certainly was. Anyway, y'all stay blessed. Bye-bye.